All glories to the symbol devotees, all glories to the symbol devotees, all glories to the symbol devotees, all glories to Sri Guru and Sri Gauranga. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Fourth Canto, Creation of the Fourth Order Chapter 22, Pritya Maharaj, Maharaj's meeting with the Kumaras, text 41. Matrevacha. <laughs> Sa evam brahmaputrena Kumaran Kumara Natman made a sa Thirshitat Magati Samyak 
Prashasya Vachatam Napraha Mitra Vacha Evam Brahma Putrena Umare Natma Medasa Tarshatma Gati Samyak Prashasya Vachatam Napraha Maitre Vacha Sa Evam Brahma Putrena Kumare Natma Medasa Darshatma Gati Samyak Prashasya Vacha Tam Nirpaha Vacha, the great sage Maitre said, Saha, the king, Evam, thus, Brahmaputrena, by the son of Lord Brahma, Kumarena, by one of the Kumaras, Atmamedasa, well versed in spiritual knowledge, Darshita. Being shown, Atmagati, spiritual advancement, Samyak, completely, Prashasya, worshipping, Uvacha, Uvacha, said, Tam unto him, Nripaha, the king. Translation. The great sage Maitre continued. Being thus enlightened in complete spiritual knowledge by the son of Brahma, one of the Kumaros, who was complete in spiritual knowledge, the king worshipped them in the following words. In this verse, the word Atma Medasa is commented upon Sripad Vishnath Chakravati Thakura, who says that Atmani means unto Lord Krishna, Paramatmani. Lord Krishna is Paramatma, Ishvara Parama Krishna, Brahma Samhita, 15.1. Yeah, this one in the books. Yeah. 15.1. Therefore, one whose mind is acting fully in Krishna consciousness is called Atmamedaha. This may be contra contrasted to the word Grihamedi, which refers to one whose brain is always engrossed with thoughts of material activities. The Atmamedaha is always thinking of Krishna's activities and Krishna consciousness. Since Sanat Kumar, who was a son of Lord Brahma, was fully Krishna conscious, he could point out the path of spiritual advancement. The word Atmagati refers to that path of activities by which one can make progress in understanding Krishna. So just read one more. Rajuvacha kutome nugraha purvam harirna ta nukampina tam apada yitum brahman bhagavan yuyam agataha. The 
The king said, O Brahman, O powerful one, formerly Lord Vishnu showed me his causeless mercy, indicating that you would come to my house, and to confirm that blessing, you have all come. Purport. When Lord Vishnu appeared in the great arena of sacrifice at the time when King Prithu was performing a great sacrifice, Ashwamedha, he predicted that the Kumaras would very soon come and advise the king. Therefore, Prithu Maharaj remembered the causeless mercy of the Lord and thus welcomed the arrival of the Kumaras, who were fulfilling the Lord's predic prediction. In other words, when the Lord makes a prediction, he fulfills that prediction through some of his devotees. Similarly, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu predicted that both his glorious names and the Hare Krishna Mahamantra would be broadcast in all the towns and villages of the world. Sri the Bhakti Nod Thakur and Sri the Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Prabhupada desired to fulfill this great prediction, and we are following in their footsteps. Regarding his devotees, Lord Krishna told Arjun, Konte ye Kunteya Pritijanihi Name Bhakta Pranashati. O son of Kunti, declare it boldly that my devotee will never perish. In Bhagavad Gita chapter nine, text thirty one. The point is that the Lord himself could declare such things, but it was his desire to make the declaration through Arjun and thus doubly assure that his promise would never be broken. The Lord himself promises, and his confidential devotees execute the promise. The Lord makes so many promises for the benefit of suffering humanity. Although the Lord is very compassionate upon suffering humanity, human beings are generally not very anxious to serve him. The relationship is something like that between the father and the son. The father is always anxious for the welfare of the son, even though the son forgets or neglects the father. The word anu anukampina is significant. The Lord is so compassionate upon the living entities that he comes himself into this world in order to benefit fallen souls. Hida hida hidharma sya glani bhavati bharata adbhutanam madharma sya tadaanam shijamiham Whenever and wherever there is a decline in religious practice, O descendant of Bharat, and the predominant rise of irreligion at that time, I descend myself. Bhagavad Gita chapter 4, text 7. Thus, it is out of compassion that the Lord appears in his different forms. Lord Sri Krishna appeared on this planet out of compassion for fallen souls. Lord Buddha appeared out of compassion for the poor animals who were being killed by the demons. Lord Nisingadeva appeared out of compassion for Prahlad Maharaj. The conclusion is that the Lord is so compassionate upon the fallen souls within this material world that he, hims that he comes himself or sends his devotees and his servants to fulfill his desire to have all the fallen souls come back home, back to Godhead. Thus Lord Sri Krishna instructed Bhagavad Gita to Arjun for the benefit of the entire human society. Intelligent men should therefore seriously consider this Krishna consciousness movement and fully utilize the instructions of Bhagavad Gita as preached without adulteration by his pure devotees. Om Gyanita Vrindasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chakshulan Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Mukam Katitava Chalam Pangam Langai Te Gidim Yet Kripa Tamaham Vande Shri Gurun Dinitarinam Vancha kapladu bhishta kripa sendu bhevacha patitanam pavanebhyo vaishnavebhyo no no maha. Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhupada Nanda Shri Advaita Gadadha Shri Vasari Gauda Bhakti Vinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare God bless you. Does anybody know where that originates from? No, I don't know either. <laughs> I was just thinking maybe somebody knew. I don't know, I heard that there was some idea that, oh, when you sneeze,
spirit's trying to leave, so you say, God bless, you're supposed to keep the spirit. I don't know. Someone. Who knows? So I'll just read the two translations again. 41 and 42. So tomorrow's 43. The great sage Maitreya continued, being thus enlightened in complete spiritual knowledge by the son of Brahma, one of the Kumaras, who was complete in spiritual knowledge, the king worshipped them in the following words. The king said, O Brahman, O powerful one, formerly Lord Vishnu showed me his causeless mercy, indicating that you would come to my house. And to confirm that blessing, you have all come. So they have a, I mean, they, whoever they are, but you hear the saying, it's a common saying, that, or you don't know what you have until you lost it, right? You can't uh, fully appreciate, at least in some cases, what you have until you lose it. Uh, Just like if someone has lots of money and they lose it, they're always thinking of how to get that money back. They're always thinking about that money. And on some level, they may appreciate how they had so much money. But at the time, maybe they weren't appreciating. But specifically, a lot of the times people, they, they say that in relation to, in relation to uh, people, that you have a hard time appreciating somebody while, while you're in their association and then when they leave, means they, they, they pass away, then you'll, you're able to, oh, I, I wish I would have had more of his association or he wasn't such a bad guy after all. Actually, he was like a really good guy. Actually, he was one of the best guys I ever knew in my life. They say that, right? Oh, no. And yeah, many times it's, it's, it's actually true. Uh, people don't realize what they have. They have the saying, right, familiarity breeds contempt. So sometimes devotees also have that experience that they become too familiar with Krishna, too familiar with devotees, too familiar with the temple. And uh, they can't fully appreciate or appreciate Christian consciousness because they, yeah, you could say their vision's becoming covered over. And in relation to Srila Prabhupada, I think this thing is uh, droop falling. So in relation to Srila Prabhupada, <laughs> in relation to Srila Prabhupada, devotees say that he, he was here for quite a short time, actually. I mean, with, with his disciples. and I mean, like those of us who are grand disciples of Srila Prabhupada, our spiritual masters, many of them, we may be able to be with them for many years, a decade, two decades. Like, I have... Yeah, with my spiritual master, yeah, almost, whatever, 15 years or something where, and a lot of uh, disciples have like, 20 years, 30 years, their spiritual masters around, you could say. And Srila Prabhupada, 11, 12 years, and then he left. And some devotees, they joined later. Some devotees joined in 1975, right? Prabhupada was only there for two more years. Some devotees joined in 76. So, uh, I mean, but of course, like I was talking with Parashakti, I said, oh, Parashakti, how many times did you get to hear Prabhupada? She said, oh, I heard Prabhupada a few times, I saw him a few times. And she said, actually, me hearing him now is way more powerful than me hearing him in the past, and even in person. Because she was saying that, you know, I've, with all of my devotional service, and I, I'm adding that, but with all of her devotional service and specifically her, her becoming familiar with Prabhupada and Prabhupada's teachings and his accent, she said she's able to be more absorbed in it. And that's the case. 
generally, right? It, more advanced one becomes more absorbed they're able to be in the, the association, the real association of their spiritual master. But some devotees, they comment on this about, about sh in relation to Srila Prabhupada, about, it's like, he, uh, they say it was almost like a flash. Like Prabhupada just, he appeared on the scene and he started the movement and, you know, traveled throughout the world and then he was gone. Gotten like his you know, physical in this world left. Uh, and some in my spiritual master, he right when Srila Prabhupada left this world, he uh, he asked Tamal Krishna Goswami if, if he could do any service to help. So then Tamal Krishna Goswami said, "Yeah, you could write something for our specifically our members in Mumbai, Bombay." explaining uh, about pro appreciation and offering to Srila Prabhupada, explaining you know, his departure and all that. So he did that. And in that, in that explanation, he said many interesting things, but one of the points I want to focus on is that he said that when, when thunder... Uh, Right? And, and thunder strikes, or you hear thunder, you hear, you, hear, you hear the thunder, right? And some people, maybe only a few, will see the thunder. Thunder? Right? Is that right? See lightning. Yes, see, sorry. See, see, only a few will see the lightning, right? And, he, and where, um, even though only so many people see it, the after effects... Of the th of the yeah of hearing the thunder, people will hear it. So he's making the point that not so many people saw Prabhupada. You could say some people saw him. Many of his disciples, and he met with many people and traveled around. They saw him. Um, that's another case, right? Like Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur said, "Oh, did you really see him? Do you really see Bhakti Siddhanta Thakur?" But uh, people saw him. You could say. But my my spiritual master was making the point that w w the people who didn't see him, they're they're hearing the after effects of the lightning or the thunder in the form of his the thunder uh, the message of his books the, within his books, and uh, that's continuing. <coughs> and after thunder, you know, rain falls, and he was making the point that. The reign of of mercy, Srila Prabhupada's uh, reigning mercy down in all on, on this world, and specifically, and then he went to six, explain that. But in order to get that rain, you need you need uh, vessels, right? Pots, vessels to keep the. So he was saying that his disciples are meant to be the vessels distributing that mercy. And then he said, but actually, it's actually the Shri Prabhupada's kindness on us because he's in inundating the whole universe. He doesn't really need us to help, but it's his kindness to give us uh, meaning in our lives. It would give us something to do, help him. Um, so in these particular verses and purports, there's been, which Sri Prabhupada, he brings this, many, and, and brings this up in his books many times, the contrast between the Atma Medaha, which means one whose mind is acting full in Krishna consciousness or devotee, and the Griha Medi, one whose brain is always engrossed with thoughts of material activities. So the the what devotees are all about, they're all about uh, saving the griha medis, those engr engrossed in thoughts and material activities. But of course, one has to become a devotee, <laughs> right, in order to have that mentality, because if one himself is a great griha medi or herself is a griha medi, then they're engrossed in material activities and thoughts, and right? Um, so, so that's the idea that we are saved by devotees, um, and then, which means they help us become devotees. And then, upon, upon becoming devotees, we're also supposed to help that mission. 
it's a it's a it's it's a, it's a missionary movement after all. And in the purport, they're uh, they're talking about, or Shri the Prophet's talking about, the prediction or many predictions that, specifically, there's this prediction that Vishnu made. He made the prediction that the Kumaras would come and visit you. He made that prediction to Prithu Maharaj when he saw him. And there's many predictions. And one prediction, which is very important within our tradition, is the prediction that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, that Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu did it, predicted that both his names and the Hare Krishna mantra will be broadcast all over the, in all the towns and villages of the world. And Bhaktivinoda Thakur, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur, Prabhupada desired to fulfill this great prediction, and we were following in their footsteps. So, the, so, 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 Prabhupada, he was, Prabhupada was, was on fire. He had a, he had a, he had an uncontrollable desire to give people mercy, give, give people the mercy of Krishna in the form of teaching them and so many prasadam and books and harinam. He had an uncontrollable desire to give people mercy. And, and he acted on that. Practically, yeah, I mean, at all times he was acting on that desire. Not that he just had it, but he was acting on it. And therefore Prabhupada was traveling all over the world, constantly meeting people and trying to encourage people, and he did. And Prabhupada wasn't in this mood of like, okay, let's just wait till something happens, right? Let's just wait till something happens. Because sometimes... People they like to do that. Oh, let's 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 wait till I'm 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 bored. Let's let's wait. I'm a, I hope something happens, right? Or, but there's there's people they 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 try to make things happen. They're very active. So that's how Sri the Prabhupada was. He's very active, and I'm thinking about when he first went to Mexico, Mexico City. He went down there with Shama Sundar, which Shama Sundar just writes about it a little bit. This next book he's going to. Uh, write about Prabhupada going to Mexico City. Him and Srila Prabhupada going to Mexico City. Uh, by the way, I, I, I contacted Chama Sundar Prabhu and I asked him if he could come to San Diego. And he said that, because you know, he could come and give talk and, and, and distribute his books and visit us. And he said, he said, oh, that's, I like that idea. He said, I'll get back to you about that one. But when I'm free and my schedule's free, and so I haven't got back to him yet. But, but specifically, he said that <laughs> he said I would love to go and visit one of Sri the Prabhupada's favorite cities. He's talking about San Diego, and I was I was very surprised by that because I never heard that that was one of Sri the Prabhupada's favorite cities, San Diego. So I asked him. I said, Prabhu, I'm just curious. You know, what made you say that? That, that this is one of Srila Prabhupada's favorite cities. And he said, for that you'll have to wait for my next book. Because he said he, he's writing how him and Srila Prabhupada came to San Diego. But yeah, it's a nice encouraging. Prabhupada likes San Diego. It's one of his favorite cities. So, but at the very end of the second volume, he writes a little bit about Srila Prabhupada's visit to Mexico City. And he says he goes there, and he said, yeah, the people are very pious, very good, you know, good hearts, good natured. And he said that when Srila Prabhupada walked into the Mexico temple, which Frida Nanda Goswami and a few of the devotees, they really, they really were doing some amazing work down there, you know, attracting lots of people. They got a temple. And when Srila Prabhupada walked in, uh, Shama Sundar was writing that, he, he wrote that uh, the people there, there were, Acting like Srila Prabhupada was the Pope, you know, very respectful and you know, humble, bowing down. And then one devotee told Srila Prabhupada that that there was a very famous radio station that wanted to interview him, and there was like a ridiculous amount of people who who listened, on a million, more than million, few million, something like that. It's amazing how these talk shows and all these get so much attention, but yeah. 
And then uh Sri the Prabhupada so they so this devotee said, So Prabhupada, we could go tonight or we could go tomorrow night. Cause, and by that time it was late at night. And Srila Prabhupada said, Okay, well well what time do they want us to come in tonight? And they said some really late. It was like eleven o'clock at night, twelve. It would go really late. And then uh and then Prabhupada said, Okay, we're gonna go in tonight. And then the devotee said, Oh, what what you know, it's really late, Prabhupada. And Prabhupada said, It's okay, we'll preach tonight, we'll sleep tomorrow. <laughs> Prabhupada probably didn't sleep, but <laughs> the other devotee slept. So they went in there and the, a lot of these talk show guys, you know, they're a little sarcastic and a lot of the time and trying to give. Uh, it must be, must be Spanish, must be translation going on. But this guy becomes completely just, Prabhupada, through his preaching, I, I forgot exactly what Prabhupada was saying to him, but Prabhupada was so charming, so intelligent, so expert, and just so powerful that through the preaching to this guy, he was preaching to him, and then at one particular point, the guy was just stunned. He couldn't speak anymore because how Prabhupada affected him. And then they, okay, go to commercial. He went to commercial. And, um, yeah, it's a problem. So they all go to commercial. Right? And uh, Shama Sundar was saying how, uh, how Prabhupada, he just, he captured Mexico City just in that night. You know, so many million people hearing and you know, that guy. So, anyways, there's so many cases probably going around, going around, traveling, 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 preaching, so many wonderful pastimes and stories how Sri Prabhupada was inspiring people. Why? Because he, he had faith in this, this prediction. It wasn't just like, okay, well, maybe it will happen, maybe it won't happen, or maybe it's just some poetic expression within the Chaitanya Bhagavat. But he had faith that this is true, that Lord Chaitanya's name will be spread in every town and village. Uh, so similarly, we should also have that faith and we should work in that direction. Or else, what's the value of our lives? Honestly. There's not much value. Just another um, griha medi in the crowd. Uh, just another lost soul in the crowd. So, the idea is we should work in that direction. Um, or else, yeah, I mean, really, it's just a waste of human form of life. And we should try to, whatever circumstance we come, whatever circumstance we have, we should try to extend the mercy of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Just like, uh, which, kind of, bringing up another point, but like last night there was some girl and I have no reason why she was sitting in front of the temple but it's kind of very random she was sitting in front of the temple very strange uh, and Mukunda Charna she, he, he walked out there and he saw her and I walked out there and I, I said okay I'm going to give her a book I gave her perfection of yoga I gave her a card and, but I asked her I said so I, I seized the opportunity so Thankfully, because you don't know. I mean, you may you, that might be her only association with with devotees. Very brief, right? or someone who's trying to be devotee. Brief. Uh, but she she said, "Oh, I'm having a difficult night." And she just started to cry a little bit, and and I, I'm not going to get into the. I, I didn't ask her, oh, "What's the difficulty?" <laughs> I just said, "Okay, well, sorry to hear that." And. And she said, I'm, I'm looking for a bar. And she said, not something that, like, not really, like, you know, a lot of people and a lot going on, but just something small. I just want to sit down and have a drink. And then I asked her, I said, oh, yeah? Is that really going to help you? I don't know why I said that. But I said, is that going to help you? And she goes, ah, no, not really, probably not. I just... So I said, okay, well, here, take a book. So I gave her a book. And whatever, we spoke a little bit, and then she just walked down the street to some bar, trying to find a bar. Um, but in relation to this, I mean, sh she knows that it won't help her. 
but she's still doing it. Why? Because that's her option. Those that 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 that's that's the option she has. She doesn't have any other options practically. Uh, and she hasn't learned how to take shelter of Krishna. She hasn't learned how to surrender to Krishna, right? Sarvadamam pritya mamekam sharanam vraja aham tam sarvapapyabhyo moksha samimasucha. Krishna says, you surrender to me, I'll protect you. All sinful reactions, do not worry. In other words, you're safe, you're happy, you're secure. Everything's good if you surrender to Krishna. Even though it may not seem good sometimes, it is. But she doesn't have that at all. Um, and she hasn't learned how to take shelter of Krishna when there's problems. So that's the, you could say, the major epidemic within this world. Epidemic, is it? Epidemic? Disease? Yeah. Huh? Pandemic. pandemic. Major pandemic in this world that all, so many souls, they don't know how to take shelter of Krishna. They do not know how to, and they don't want to. That's another problem. They want to take shelter of a bar, they want to take shelter of a boy, they want to take shelter of a girl, they want to take shelter of a drug, they want to take shelter of so many, my, huh? Money, money's a big one, right? That's, that's what makes everything go. Will the world spin, money? I guess it's, anyways. Uh, so, so similarly, devotees, it's not that necessarily we join and we know how to take shelter of Krishna either. We have to learn how to take shelter of Krishna at all times and all circumstances. That when there's some difficulty, when there's some problem, when there's some issue, when we're feeling bored, when we're feeling depressed, when we're feeling frustrated, when we're feeling angry, when we're feeling lonely, when we're feeling on and on and on and on and on, when we're having difficulties with our mind, with our senses, with, with people, whatever it may be, there, isn't, there, there may be when we're tempted by the loser energy of Krishna, we have to learn how to take shelter of Krishna. Not like this girl, okay, hey, where's the bar? Show me where the bar is. Even though I know it doesn't work really. I'm just trying to like, like uh, cover my problems pretty much. And also we should have conviction that these people don't know what they're doing. Uh, sometimes, you know, we think all oh, materialists, they all got it together and they look very pretty and handsome and, you know, enjoying their lives and all that. But they have no idea what they're doing. And they're bored. They're bored as bored can be. And they're just trying to fill their time with all different types of things, all different types of activities and so on. And that they're actually looking, ultimately looking for Krishna. So if they're looking for Krishna and we have Krishna, we should give Krishna to them. That's the idea. Um, so the prediction that Lord Chaitanya predicted that my name and glories will be spread throughout the world and how devotees are meant to participate in that and have compassion. Because after all, it's about compassion. I mean, Nirsingadev, he appeared because of Prahlad Maharaj, protect him. Buddha, Lord Buddha came to, to for, uh, out of compassion for the poor animals. So it's all about compassion. Krishna is all about compassion. The Krishna consciousness movement is all about compassion. And that means preaching Bhagavad Gita without adulteration by pure devotees. So we should become pure devotees. We should preach Bhagavad Gita, preach Bhagavatam, teach these things, live these things, principles. And in this way, we're participating in the pastimes of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Or else we try to participate in the so-called pastimes of this world, <laughs> Griha Medi pastimes, which... Griha Medi, uh, material, which boils down mostly because materialistic household life. Or nowadays people don't have, like everybody, like I met this couple last night and they came, they're uh, students. So she came with her husband. And they were young, they're 21, yeah, and they're married. It's all shocking, right? Everybody's shocked. Right? Oh, you're 21 and you're married? I can't believe, I, even me, I was shocked. I said, so you two are so young. 
how and I didn't ask my old, but they told me how they oh yeah, we're twenty one. She they said everybody tells us that. Everybody tells us that. You two are so young and you're married. So I mean people wait to get married to nowadays, you know, they're I don't know. Old, you know, thirty, thirty five, forty, forty. So um so whether it's griha made materialistic household life, which is maybe a rarity nowadays more and more, or it's just materialistic life and whatever. Um, the idea is that those aren't meant to be, you know, pleasurable pastimes, but uh, we're supposed to engage in the pastimes of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Just like, also one thing, there was one devotee, he, uh, he's having a hard time, his parents are giving him a hard time, and his old girlfriend that he broke up with to be a devotee is giving, giving him a hard time, and she said, she said, oh, I just, since you wanted to join, uh, be a devotee and join the temple and all that, I just, I have so much, she said, I have a, like a grudge towards Krishna, you know, like stealing my boyfriend. Um, and families feel like that, oh, you want God over me, right? But whatever, I mean, what can you do? I mean, you have, we have to make a choice. We want Krishna. And even if other people are going to be offended and disturbed and annoyed, and this whole world may be annoyed with us, but we don't really care because we, we want Krishna. So that's what we have to come to, that point of learning how to take shelter of Krishna and also developing that uh, compa compassion towards the fallen conditioned souls and also participating in the wonderful pastimes that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu predicted, namely the spreading of the holy name throughout the world. Okay, does anybody have any... Questions or comments? Shlokas? I'm ready to your last point about the bhakta who will remain anonymous for now. <laughs> yeah. It reminded me of the third verse of the uh, Sadhu Sangashtaka. Yeah. Where he, d he describes a sadhu. You know, you get somebody, the second one, Tikshiva Karunika. He's tolerant, he's merciful, you know, like that. But the third verse, mm -hmm. that the real sadhu, he's very determined, and he practices one-pointed devotion to me. And matkote, check the karma on us. He'll give up any activity that's impeding his devotion. And matkote, check the karma on us. Check the swajana bandhava. And if, if there's an impediment, he will also give up association with his friends and family. Swajana, yes. Bandana, Bandana. Hare Krishna. Yes. That's necessary sometimes. Yeah, it's a pretty intense point. You know, I'll give up associate your fam these close ties with your family. But yeah, that's what could I mean, you, Yeah, you had a special case. You joined with his mother. His mother's also initiated devotee, so that's like very, very rare. I'm sure there were others who you had to cut the ties with. Yeah. Yeah, it's difficult, I think, for a lot of people. Uh, but there's, yeah, there's quite a few devotees out there. I mean, you could just see how it's not true. You know, they say, oh, I love you, and, you know, you're my family member, but it's not, it's not really true love, actually. Because they say, oh, I love you, but, you know, once you do something that I don't like, namely you become a devotee, then I'm going to reject you forever. I'm never going to talk to you again. I mean, how is that love? And I and there was one devotee was telling me last night. She said that her aunt, her aunt, she said that now you're Hare Krishna, and uh, I don't I don't want to talk to you. And yeah, they haven't talked. But I thought it was impressive that that uh, the devotee, sh sh you know, she she was determined, and yeah, I'm gonna be a devotee. I don't, you know, okay, fine. If my aunt wants to, you know, reject me, then what can I do? I thought that was impressive. But, uh, yeah. So. Uh, sh maybe she's a Christian, yeah. <laughs> it's real love, right? <laughs> real loving Christian. Y okay, yes.
lifetime, not the lifetime. Okay, if, if I go in and out of that of states like where sometimes I'm thinking it's all I'm relating to the family, and sometimes I'm not. Yeah, that's in the past time near Singadev and Prahlad Maharaj, that's brought up that, that so many generations front and back are liberated if one becomes a pure devotee. Is it 100? I can't remember. Is it 100? Not sure if it's 100, 14, 7, 14, something like that. But a good number. And Prabhupada did say, and my guru quotes in Life's Final Exam, his book, one of his books, that uh, he says that my disciples parents will realize their good fortune at the time of their leaving their body. Yeah. So, yeah. His other book is coming out too, just as a side note. It's supposed to be in March, apparently. The Juhu book. Yeah. Very. Yeah, 600 pages. 600 pages. Yeah. Nice. All right. Grantraj, Shamad Bhagavatam, Ki Jai.